Well, I think we're all indebted to our clerks who've been masters of efficiency in this long, uh, difficult uh, day. <laughs> I have the opportunity to say a few words, and I want to start with words I've always wanted either to say or hear someone say. The Scottish Parliament adjourned on the 25th day of March in the year 1707 is hereby reconvened. I really couldn't say that until you'd all sworn the oath and really been convened. Well, it's a historic day, and I'm aware, in a long time in politics, that we owe a debt to many who are not here, who didn't live to see the promised land. I'd like to mention a few across parties. Arthur Donaldson and Robert McIntyre, Alec Buchanan-Smith, Johnny Bannerman, Emerus Hughes, John McIntosh, and John Smith, and it's today that his fifth anniversary of his death is. And I'd like also to mention Alan McCartney, my colleague until so recently, who so nearly lived to see the day. Now, there's so many other names, and I've only gone for people of my own uh, friendship that I've known, but there's so many names in the history books, named and people not in the history books, who have made this history possible. I would love to, like to give my thanks to every one of them. Um, <clears throat> I have been in two parliaments, as everyone knows, I think. I was eight years in the House of Commons and 23 years in the European Parliament. Not so long if you, not so long if you say it quickly. I'm uh, the mother of the European Parliament still until July, and I hasten to add not the oldest, though I'm the oldest here which is very disconcerting. I think they made a mistake in my birth certificate somewhere. <laughs> but I have several practical hopes, very sincerely, for this Parliament. The first hope is that we try to follow the more consensual style of the European Parliament and that we can say goodbye to the badgering and backbiting that seems to one associate with Westminster. Secondly, in the Commons, I found that there was a speaker's tradition of being fair to minorities. And I'm an expert in being a minority because I was alone in the House of Commons and, uh, for three years and alone in the European Parliament for 19 years. But I have to say we're all minorities now and I hope the presiding officer, whoever that may be, will be fair to each and every one of us. My next hope is that this Parliament by its mere existence, will create better relations with England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, which is what I believe is in the hearts of the peoples of all these countries. And my last practical hope is that everyone born in Scotland, whether they were born, like me, can't help it, or whether they have chosen Scotland as their country, will live in harmony together with us all enjoying our, our cultures, our cultures, plural, but being loyal to their own. Out there in Europe and in the world, the greater world, there is a bank of goodwill towards Scotland. And I was privileged to visit 28 countries of the third world in my, thir of the third world in my third world committee. And I met many heads of state and struggling countries with problems. And many a head of state said to me, What's taking the Scots so long? And I know that there will be such a lot of goodwill in all these countries of the world. I've served in the Lomi Assembly, which is the European Parliament plus half the world. And I think one of the proudest moments was when Lomi came to Inverness, half the world. And we made a declaration, which is part of a, a sort of international law called the Declaration of Inverness. And we swept away in that declaration the last vestiges of apartheid. Thus, we played a constructive role on the international stage, and we earned the admiration of all who attended from Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific. I have a pledge to make on behalf of my party 
to make this parliament work. We all here can make it work and we can make it a showpiece of modern democracy. It's no secret that this parliament is to us not quite the fulfillment of our dream, but it's a parliament we can build a dream on. Because our dream is to be as sovereign as Denmark or Finland or Austria, no more, no less. But we know that this dream can only come true with the total consensus of the people of Scotland. And that we accept. I would like to end by quoting from the debate of 1707. And I've chosen a passage from Lord Belhaven, who was an opponent of the treaty. And this is what he said then. Show me a spurious patriot, a bombastic fire eater, and I will show you a rascal. Show me a man who loves all countries equally with his own, and I will show you a man who lacks any sense of proportion. But show me a man who, while he respects all countries equally with his own, yet is ready to defend the rights of his own against them all, and I will show you a man who is both a nationalist and an internationalist. 1707 was said to be, was it not, the end of an old sign. Well, we all here together can begin to write a new Scottish song, and I would urge all of you to sing it in harmony fortissimo. Thank you. Now break for lunch, welcome news, and we resume at 2.30 as all members have taken their oath. At 2.30, the voting period for the election of the presiding officer will commence. The nomination period for presiding officer runs from 12.30 to 2.15. Thank you very much. <laughs>